Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. What does HARP do? HARP is, uh, is a large antenna where we beam radio frequency energy up into the upper atmosphere and we create on a small scale what the sun normally does. The assignment came that the Navy and the Air Force were to manage the program. Applications uh, discussed in the patents included destroying missiles. Communications, control, and disruption were included. There were some other ideas, both to possibly modify weather, and finally uh, to lift a portion of the upper atmosphere further out into space, where hopefully it would be able to deflect missile trajectories. In 1983, I did radio tomography with 30 watts, looking for oil in the ground. I found 26 oil wells, over a nine state area and 100 percent of the time was accurate which is 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock harp uses a billion watts beam straight into the ionosphere for experiments picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth each one has its own frequency what we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with 2 billion watts the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. Earthquake, 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 earthquake. some of the effects that the sun creates that are similar to the aurora borealis. Harp can paint um, designs in the sky, if you will. You know, it can take the beam and move it in, in any pattern that you, that the scientist who's doing an experiment might want to do. The Morrises are experts in non-lethal weapons technology. They are consultants to the Defense Department, CIA, NSA, and world-renowned think tanks. The technology necessary to project three-dimensional images to a point in space requires no new breakthroughs in science. We have the technology 
now. Overall, uh, the non-lethal weapons development program is aimed at giving our military options between talking and shooting. A specific system development we really can't talk about. But the Morrises did talk in general about secret military experiments with lifelike 3D projections in the sky called holograms. Holograms on a battlefield would be to divert the attention of the enemy to deliver propaganda or something very frightening to make the enemy run away if you think that he will believe that what you are sending is really an angel, um, a devil, a UFO. And where could this type of weaponry be tested? Perhaps not coincidentally, along the U.S.-Mexico border at the Army's electronic proving ground in Fort Huachuca, Arizona. Keep in mind that test facilities like Fort Huachuca in Arizona are electrical optical test beds and part of what they're testing are the effects of these electro-optical devices on a target population. And the target population may be us. America has to test American equipment in America. ultimate weapon in the info war would be so secret, so invisible, so undetectable, you would never know your mind was under attack. At Laurentian University in Ontario, Canada, a young student is about to undergo one of the strangest experiences of her life. They're hooking Denise's brain up to an electroencephalograph or EEG machine. For 30 to 40 minutes, this will monitor her brain waves. While these electric coils attached on either side of her head will immerse her brain in an electromagnetic field. Her brain actually completes the circuit between the two coils. The field pulsing through her brain is less powerful than one given off by a digital clock radio. But acutely controlled and focused at specific parts of the brain, it will open Denise's mind to outside suggestion by this man. What do you do is switch to see um, if it's right left hemisphere, use your frontal temporal. Dr. Michael Persinger is a professor of psychology and neuroscience. He is designing ways to put the power of mind control to good use. Dr. Persinger's research focuses on brain trauma. And he uses carefully controlled doses of electromagnetic radiation to induce relaxation and alleviate pain. So uh, what Sandra did was to initiate a opiate releasing pattern that's a burst firing field that um, is stimulated once every four seconds. And that produces relaxation and a very pleasant sensation. Uh, similarly, using the appropriate field, we can induce fear and apprehension, but clearly that would be unethical in that setting. Dr. Persinger's tests suggest that carefully programmed electromagnetic frequencies can tap into individual brains and influence people's emotions. The cognitive processes of the human brain are really quite simple. And if you understand how they work, you can make entire populations think and decide uh, the manner in which you wish. Many experts are skeptical of such an Orwellian scenario, but Persinger thinks the implications are chillingly real. Suppose you generate a field that produces fear, fundamental fear, in large numbers of people. And then, over the television, more traditional way, as you say, the reason we're having this fear is because of this particular group. And now you start to move the population believing in a direction that you wish. To influence 250 million people, the equivalent of the entire population of the United States, may not be that difficult. According to Dr. Persinger, we already have the technology, satellites and television, and radio transmitters. Mind control may already be happening. 
We know the mysterious PSYOPs plane can beam persuasive sounds and pictures into people's television sets. Will it someday beam disturbing frequencies directly into the mind? Mind control will be the ultimate non-lethal weapon.